Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hey everyone, welcome to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano, excited about our guest today, Cody Hollister, Tennessee Titans wide receiver. And we are presented today by IJM, the International Justice Mission. You can check out their website, ijm.org slash tf to learn how you can become a freedom partner and help with the great work that IJM is doing, the International Justice Mission, ijm.org slash tf. And we're also presented by Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. For $38 a month, your sponsorship provides access to school, medical care, vocational training, food, and the opportunity to know Jesus Christ. Check out their website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum, and pray about sponsoring a child today. Very excited to bring to you our guest today, Cody Hollister from the Tennessee Titans, a wide receiver, played his college ball at Arkansas, and along with his twin brother, Jacob Hollister, was a member of the Patriots for a few years, and actually both Cody and his brother, Jacob, were a member of that Super Bowl 53 Patriots championship team. So both him and his brother have a Super Bowl ring. That's pretty cool. Cody now in his just finished up his third season with the Titans in 2019 after he signed a two-year deal and preparing for the 2020 season. Cody's a unique dude. He's an awesome guy who loves football, certainly, loves music, which we'll talk a lot about later on in this episode. And he loves Jesus, and that's amazing to hear. His story and his journey are a really good one. So take a listen to Cody Hollister's journey of faith, football, and music, and he joins us here on Sports Spectrum. Cody, welcome to Sports Spectrum. What's up, brother? Thanks for having me. What's going on, my friend? Good to have you here. I've uh, been waiting to do this for a while. Picked the right time, I guess, because we're all kind of hunkered down with a little bit of extra time with COVID-19. You're in Bend, Oregon. Am I right on that, Bend? Yeah, that's where I'm from. Uh, it's pretty much here in Nashville now, but that's where I'm from, so off-season is always here. How's, uh, how's this COVID-19 quarantine world been treating you? I'm assuming it's the same as a lot of the people, but just being kind of cooped up in the house, what's that been like the last few weeks? Yeah, it's been interesting. Um, my trainer, Kevin Boss, he's an ex-NFL tight end for uh, the Giants. Sure. Yeah. And he's our trainer. You could even call him a brother because he's just like a brother to us. Um, so he's kind of made it easy, the transition, giving us a uh, workout sheet. And we have a sheet that we do. And we have a little gym set up in our in our garage. And so we do that and then do everything inside. We We can still go outside, but, you know, it's pretty much just to go get some sun and walk around and I'm sure everyone relates to that. Other than that, it's just playing music and just start learning the piano and uh, just trying to broaden my range. That's good. I mean, if you got the time to do it, you might as well. We'll talk about the music side of you in a second. Um, but your bro's there too, and you're a twin, you and your brother Jacob. Um, what Do you guys, there's a unique bond that a lot of people have uh, that I know who are twin brothers. Some the uniqueness is I want to be separate because we look alike and we've been doing the same thing forever. Others, it's like we're inseparable. How would you describe your relationship with, with Jacob? I think there's push and pull for, for everyone in different seasons of life because yeah. when we were little, I feel like it was just joined at the hip. And he was always, he always kind of took the older brother role because he's technically an hour and a half older. <laughs> of course. And, uh, but we kind of took on those roles of, of I was a younger brother until college where we totally separated. And for three years after our first two colleges, we separated. I went to Arkansas, he went to Wyoming. And that's when the Lord totally like shifted me. It started out with a deep, we're going deep here, but deep depression, like deep anxiety, didn't know who I was, loss of identity. Yeah. And then shaping me into the man I am today of just like totally wrecking me and then just reshaping me uh, to be a man of God. And then Jacob, it was a little easier for him, but then a totally different faith journey too. So I'd say we've had moments of like joined at the hip and then it was like this just pull apart, you know, out of the blue three years. And that's when now we're just so comfortable being alone, but we mm. still love being together. We're, we're best friends for sure. 
No, that's good. That's really cool. What's the Lord been showing you? We'll talk a lot about your faith journey and even what you just brought up maybe and go a little deeper there. But right now, just in isolation in the last three, four weeks, last month or two, what's the Lord been showing you during this time right now? So much. Um, I think everyone can can attest to this probably just being at home, but the value of time, um, the value of time and that, you know, we always like to say that we don't have enough time. If we only had more time, then we could do these things. And I guess, and especially when it comes to the Lord, we're like, man, if I only had another hour in the day, I'd spend more time with the Lord. And I think now is a time when um, that's revealed and you say uh, you have more minutes, but then you end up filling it with different things that are not of God. And so um, I've seen myself do that. I'm like, man, so many have all this time and I still don't see as much productivity. And so, um, I think the Lord's shown me just the value of time um, when it comes to hanging with my family and, and not just being around him, but being intentional. Um, and same with my time with the Lord. He's showing, he, he taught me through this uh, book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by uh, John Mark Comer. Yeah. Amazing book. Everyone should read it, especially during this time. But how Jesus is, is not only your savior, but your teacher. And so I'm reading through the gospels and just saying, okay, I want to follow Jesus as if he's not just my savior, but truly my teacher. And I'm his apprentice so I can follow him as every step as every move, how he lives his life. And so the Lord's kind of reteaching me how to really follow him and the original, like what is even being a Christian It's followers of the way. And so I'm learning how to be the follower of the way all over again. Yeah. I love that. That's really good. Cody Hollister is our guest here on sports spectrum. When you, it's such a unique dynamic with you and your brother, because not only are you twins, but you're also both in the NFL, which is very rare that you would have twin brothers playing in the NFL. I don't know what the, what the, there's probably some stat out there that showed that there are other twin brothers that have played at the same time, but I can't think of any off the top of my head right away. What's that dynamic? Say it again. McCordy's on McCordy. the oh, Of course, right. They're brothers and right. they're on the same team and former teammates of yours, of course, too. Uh, but not many, you know, that are out yeah. there. So it's such a unique dynamic. When when you're playing and you're in the middle of a season, obviously you're talking to your brother, but you're keeping and you're keeping tabs on him. And he had some good moments this year with Seattle. What's that like kind of cheering each other on, but yet, you know, trying to focus on your own thing, just being players in the NFL. It's kind of, you know, your parents you're probably dreaming that someday one of your kids might make it and both of them are there. What's that like? Yeah, it's to even explain it is just, uh, I always use the verse Ephesians through 20 because it says not him who was able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask, think, or imagine. And according to the power within work within us. And so, yeah. um, that's just the story of it. This is <laughs> Ephesians through 20 of, um, I don't know how to explain it because it's just too good to be true, honestly. And something bigger that we even pray, than we even prayed for. As you know, first, second grade, we sat there praying on our hands and knees every single day. God, we want to be in the NFL. Every birthday, blowing out the candles. God, I want to be in the NFL. And, hmm. But never would we have imagined to be on the same team for two years, uh, to win a Super Bowl together, and then split up. And we're still in the league. And I'm in a dream city of mine, Nashville, and he's in Seattle. Our hometown team growing up is just, it's honestly absurd. Um, and if I could just describe it, it's just more than we imagined. I love the word absurd because that's that's so that's such a great way to say it where you're just kind of when you look back, you're like, all right, I have no idea. It's absurd. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. I love it. When you're watching him play, you're getting excited. Obviously, he had I think he had a walk off touchdown this year in one of the games for Seattle and you're watching him and you're excited. Are you more excited to watch him succeed or do you get, you know, amped up when you're making a big play too? like where where's that? Where's that level of emotions when you're making a play for yourself, but then you get to watch your brother make a play too? I think we both would say me watching him play one is way more nerve wracking. (laughs) (laughs) Now we get to experience like our parents side of things. Like my dad would just go around pacing during games and now I understand why. Um, And then two, yeah, more exciting to watch him just because when you're in it, uh, I think me and him are both really relaxed and just play relaxed and, level-headed but when I'm watching I'm like jumping around and running around and pacing and and so I think he would say the same thing I think uh even when I told him I made uh the Titans to to stay in Nashville he was like screaming on the phone with like so much joy and excitement and so I think we're our biggest supporters for sure along with you know our sisters and our parents 
What was this year like for you being, you said dream city of Nashville. I presume that's part of the musical background that you're interested in as well, but being able to be with the Titans this season, it was such a great year. Um, I happen to follow them a lot more closely than I would a normal team because my wife lives and dies for her Tennessee Titans. But what was this year like for you being around this team, the atmosphere and kind of seeing the team go to a place that a lot of people didn't expect? Yeah, I've, it was a journey. Um, I just love, I can't even express how much I love our coaching staff and the teammates and guys that just played for each other. And even Vrabel, it's like, man, you feel like he's a player just yeah. with how much he motivates us and how much he genuinely cares about each player. It's like, man, I almost tear up just thinking about him in the locker room before and after games, like we're going out there together, like ride or die. And um, coming back in, just it felt like he was one of the players and he coached coaches with that passion and so um, along with all of our coaches it's just uh it was unique and special because I truly felt like it was a family in that locker room and so the more we defied odds was just the more joy it was because man every single game going into New England going into the Ravens it was like every game they just all the odds were against us no one even some people forgot that we were even there and uh I absolutely loved it because it's like uh I think Bravo mentioned that he was like man you know, whoever was there in October, because that's when we were, I think we were two and four. And, and whoever was there in October, like talk to them now, but don't talk to, you know, people who are against us because man, it's just these guys in this room. And so um, I just absolutely love that about the coaches of, of whoever's in that room truly believed. And we never even, you know, faltered or like, you know, hesitated on, we could do this. Uh, but yeah, just so much belief in that locker room. And I'm just so proud to be a part of that team. And there was a unique dynamic from a spiritual perspective, too, because we talked to your team chaplain. We talked to Wes Woodyard, Ryan Tannehill, and Roger Saffold at a conference that you've been at before and that we were at a couple months ago. And they talked very um, positively about the influence that was taking place in that locker room from a spiritual perspective. Guys coming together, um, you know not just going to battle for each other, which is the football side of it, but from a spiritual perspective, really seeing growth, seeing guys come to Bible study, seeing guys really dive in deeper into your faith, into their faith. Can you talk about it from that perspective, what that was like for you? Yeah. I mean, such a unique team. Uh, Just being in that like Bible study every week, I was just so humbled to be in a room full of godly men and men that I can learn from because I'm a single guy and (laughs) I'm in the, I've been to PAO two times and man, I'm ready to go there with, with my wife. Yeah. I understand. Uh, <laughs> but I've been in there. I've been in there or in those, uh, those just Bible studies and listening to these guys and the children and, uh, you know, the children they have and the wives they have and, you know, truly, uh, the priority of family, their wives and the Lord inside of that room was just, you know, so eye opening to me, a single guy who, you know, you can get away with selfishness and, but these guys, man, they're truly laying down their lives, one for the Lord and, and two for their wives and their children. And so it was truly special um, for guys like me to be in there. And then for guys like them to just see them grow and become more bold in their faith. And uh, yeah, the only thing I could say is just, yeah, it was just truly an honor seeing guys just step up um, as men and James, our, our chaplain, just, you know, challenging us but also affirming us as men and saying you are men of god Mm -hmm. uh and saying this is a special environment a high pressure environment a a space where guys got like so real and open and um and raw uh which i take for granted because i think everyone's doing that but then when you get outside you're like no this is really special so so yeah it's unique and really special i'm really grateful for our chaplain and, and the guys cody hollister is joining us here on sports spectrum so you mentioned you mentioned earlier that you and your brother um, kind of were praying to be football players since you were little kids. So that makes me think, and that might be just think, you know, a regular prayer or just kind of like, we're just saying the word prayer, but it makes me think there's a foundation of faith somewhere. Can you share a little bit about where your foundation of faith takes shape, where, um, where Jesus becomes real and that becomes, you know, part of the, the walk that you have now? Yeah, my dad, uh, my dad, the first of our whole generation to be saved. And it all started with his buddy in the fire department. He was in a fire department 
And my dad was always like the cool guy, didn't grow up uh, in the faith, but he was always just that cool, you know, jock, like did all the sports, um, got the girls. And, but this, one of this, uh, one of his fire, firefighter buddies, he would just, he was a walking Bible. He would just walk out his faith and not take part in certain things. And um, my dad would just sit there and watch him. And through this, this guy would always invite him to church and he said, no, no, no. And eventually my dad adopted my oldest sister, Shelby, um, with my mom. Uh, my mom uh, is her mom. And then my dad has adopted her from, from the other, from the real dad. Uh, and he said he was just walking with my sister one day and he heard a, a whisper in his ear that said, a good dad would take his daughter to church. And he said, all right, so I'll go. And so he took his, our older sister to church and he's an analytical type. So he studied the word of God, really wanted to know and not just, you know, go off emotion. And so he studied the word of God and he came to a conclusion like, okay, God is real, but now how do I talk to him? <laughs> and so it started there. My dad dove into his faith and found the Lord, fell in love with Jesus. And um, by the grace of God, that's before I was even born. So the, by the time I was born, you know, I was raised up in a Christian home, um, parents were divorced, but my dad truly, you know, led me spiritually, uh, saw God as my father, my, my spiritual father and my heavenly father before I could even remember. So it all started there, but at the age of 12, my dad sat me down, um, and said, you're a man now and it's your choice. And so I said, you know, I want to follow Jesus. And so at the age of 12, I chose and perfect for a long time. I'm really shortening my, my testimony here, Yeah, but an imperfect journey, but you know, a God filled journey of, of the Lord totally redeeming me, protecting me, sanctifying me, um, to be the man I am today. We'll get back to our conversation with Cody Hollister in just a moment, but want to take a second to tell you about a couple of organizations that we care so deeply about compassion international. We've told you about them for years, a hope more powerful than poverty. They are the most trusted child development ministry in the world. And through sponsors like you and I, Compassion is releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. Over 2 million children thus far have been released from poverty because of Compassion. And right now, in the uncertain world that we live in, there's never a better time than to provide a child living in poverty with hope. So I want to invite you, maybe even challenge you, to make room around your dinner table to help a child who needs you. For $38 a month, tax deductible, you can sponsor a child and provide access for this child to school, medical care, food, vocational training, and the opportunity, this is most important, the opportunity to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Please go to the website Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum to learn more, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum, and pray about sponsoring a child today. We're also presented by IJM, the International Justice Mission. They do great work helping to release people from slavery, from violence. And while we sit here and learn about this reality of slavery, there are thousands of traffickers using all of their power to keep people enslaved forever, all because slavery is profitable. They simply value money more than they value human life. And these slave owners are relentless, calculated, tenacious, unafraid to use their power, money, and influence to oppress others. And we must act. And each one of us here needs to partner with IJM. I believe in this so much by becoming Freedom Partners. It's $24 or more to IJM each month, and you are given opportunities, regular opportunities to pray and advocate with IJM for the end of slavery. IJM knows where the slaves are and has a plan to rescue them. And it's because of those freedom partners that IJM is setting slaves free and putting their owners behind bars. Get involved right now by going to IJM.org slash TF, IJM.org slash TF, and help join the fight to end slavery in our lifetime today. Now back to our conversation with Cody Hollister from the Titans joining us here on Sports Spectrum. You mentioned earlier in the interview, you touched on it, and if you don't want to go there, just say so, but you talked about depression, anxiety, some of the things that you were struggling with in the valleys of separating. It sounded like when you separated from your brother and you went mm -hmm. off to college. Can you go a little deeper on what was happening there from maybe an athletic perspective, a faith perspective, and kind of where God was and how he brought you out of that? 
Yeah, I love talking about this because um, you would have never known it when I was at Arkansas. I went to the SEC school. You know, it was a dream come true. But we walked on at Nevada at a high school, transferred to Arizona Western Junior College for a year, and then I went to Arkansas. He went to Wyoming, and it was such an answer to prayer. But it's one of those prayers that gets answered, and you immediately regret it because, man, I did not want to split up for my brother. Um, so when the Lord granted me that prayer of, of going to Arkansas, I was so grateful, but at the same time, so scared. And I went there, um, fell into some deep depression and anxiety uh, that I had never experienced in my life. I mean, I would go to practice, um, put a smile on my face, and then just go home and put my face in the pillow and fake phone calls in the cafeteria just to act like it. I mean, it's like, you know, tough stuff to even talk about. Of like, man, I really was that dark. Um, yeah. Faking phone calls in the cafeteria, just calling my family, face in the pillow. So I had like social anxiety. I couldn't even talk to people. And um, But long story short, the Lord within a year through my FCA uh, leader, Will, and, and through some AAA guys, uh, college ministry stuff, uh, there's this one real breakthrough moment of they asked us to go speak to this uh, prison uh, and do some prison ministry. And and this is a guy who's like deeply depressed, but he asked us to go. And and I was good at hiding it. So I'm like, I'll go. And um, long story short, I go there, I speak. The Lord totally speaks through me with confidence and says he's a lifter of our head. And he truly did lift my head. And I spoke with confidence and hmm. authority. Um, and the Lord, through speaking through me, changed me. Uh, because in that moment, I was like, man, this is what just lights my soul on fire, uh, is doing the Lord's work. And so from that moment, I pressed in, got connected to a men's group, my college ministry, C3 over at Arkansas through Cross Church, and got connected with a godly community. And the Lord just slowly but surely changed me from the inside out. Wow. That's such a cool story. Um, describe that, though. When you say the Lord's changed, like the, the prison ministry... I love that God uses something that you have like no interest in doing and all of a sudden he just lifts you up, right? That's happened to a lot of us. I've heard a lot of athletes on here and certainly even my testimony of just going out of the comfort zone that you hear a lot. That's when I think God does his greatest work. Tell me about what that means to go out of the comfort zone, right? And, and when you say you saw him do a work in you, not just through speaking to those you know, prisoners, but Take me into what that looks like over the mm. Are you being discipled? Are you getting in God's word? Are you pr in prayer every day? Mm. Are you setting up new uh, rhythms and disciplines in your mm. life? And that's where you're seeing the breakthrough happen? Yeah. So first, the first part of the question, the prison ministry was not something I wanted to do. I was so uncomfortable, but now I kind of, I lean into uncomfortable things because I see that that's where the Lord does the most. Uh, even the story of Gideon, like stripping his army from him and, and to, to a very uncomfortable point because with the original amount, he's saying, you know, I've got this, or this is at least doable and logical. And, but you strip something from you and suddenly you're dependent on the Lord. And so the uncomfortable moments for me, I actually lean into now uh, because it forces dependency on God. And that was the prison ministry. I went in with no notes. I went in so, you know, felt so unworthy and I literally asked God, like, I need you to do something because I, I'm nervous. I'm going up there. I don't know what to say. And and the Lord just brought women to tears. The first was the women brought women to tears, connected with one woman, like you could say saved her life. The Lord totally used me. She reached out a, a year later on Facebook, said that day changed my life. And wow. this is just such a testament to God and what he can do with, you know, someone who's leaning into uncomfortability. But second part of the question, uh, yeah, there was a lot of applicable things like, uh, after that prison ministry, there were so many, I asked the Lord, like, put people in my life uh, that you want in my life. And so the, I always say, like, he surrounded me with, with godly community, and I had to take grasp of it. Uh, there was amazing godly community um, that I chose. To, it was the first real Christian friends I had, and I saw it just deeply affect me, um, change my life. People who truly cared about me weren't uh, discouraging my faith, but truly uplifting it. Uh, encouraging purity, encouraging these things that, you know, the other side was just so against the grain and it just felt like an upper, uphill battle. And um, yeah, so after I surrendered, I could say like that was a surrender moment at the prison. And then I became surrounded and then I became equipped through through a men's group that I got connected to. The Lord put that in my life. I went on a, on a uh, mission trip with a group that I just got deeply connected to. Um, and I read the first full book of the Bible ever 
you know, after being a Christian my entire life, I had no idea what it meant to be a Christian. Um, and I suddenly started reading about even what my faith was. And I was just in awe of it because I love when people have grown up in it, it's especially in the South, it's so hard sometimes because if you're just fed this information over and over again, sometimes you think you know it and you just never really study it. But man, if you really study the Bible and read it as if you've never read it, it's so eye opening. So I started, I read the gospels. I started from Genesis and read all the way through and, and truly like changed my life. Um, cause it reopened my eyes to God's character, who he is, um, the depth of his love for me. Um, and not even just knowing things, truly reading the Bible does change you. It's, it's part of reading God's word that does change you. And so if you're a believer, like the Holy spirit does read the scripture and teaches you new things every time. And so I'd say reading the Bible is the most, um, crucial thing I ever did, uh, was starting to read the, the word of God and becoming equipped within the community and fellowship with believers was, was life changing. Hmm. When you get to the NFL, um, you're not like this, you know, first round draft pick with, you know, with all of these things you had to grind through to make the team. You end up with the Patriots, not a bad franchise to come in with. And like you said, you and your brother were able to be on a team together that won a Super Bowl. That's pretty cool. But you're not you're not a guaranteed I'm starting every week type of guy. And you got to kind of go through the ebbs and flows of the NFL. Walk me through how faith has helped you stay grounded through the ebbs and flows where you might play one week. It might not the next, maybe you don't play this week. Maybe you play every week, whatever that is, help me understand and help us understand how you're able to just stay content and, 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 and focused on God and his plan for you. When from a worldly perspective, I don't know about you, but if that were me, I'd be like, come on, man, I want to play. Come on. What's going on here? This is God, what are you doing to me here? Walk us through that. Yeah, I mean, you can go back to Philippians 4.13 because it's it's totally misquoted some, uh, the majority of the time of if I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, and it's not, you know, I can jump off this building and fly. It's really Paul so talking true. about the ups and downs of life. Yeah. Um, and so I'd go, to, I'd go there and say, I can do all things truly in the highs and the lows. And it's actually in the lows where the Lord has, has truly shaped me and the grass grows in the lows. And um, it's at the peaks where I'm like, okay, I'm about to learn a lesson here because life's almost too good right now. And so I'm like, <laughs> I'm leaning into the valleys of life. Uh, but yeah, it's been a journey even so far. I'm still grinding like every year's a grind. And I like it that way because I like the dependency it forces me into with God. And I like working hard. And so I don't want to have any, I love being content, but never complacent. Um, Cause contentness is, I totally believe in. I believe Paul was content wherever he was at in prison, being beaten. Like he came out rejoicing but never complacent that he fought the good fight. But um, yeah, start out first year practice squad, grinded second year IR at back surgery. Um, and then coming off that, you could say there was plenty of reasons to give up or after I didn't get re-signed with the Patriots, but, but you know, there's that thing inside of you called the Holy spirit that does not allow you to go against what the Lord wants. And, um, and I could say that the Lord, yeah, he just would not let me give up. And it's just that battle inside me and my brother always say, no quit, hashtag no quit. And yeah, there's something inside of you is just ingrained in you that, man, there's no giving up, uh, that all I can give you, Lord, is my best. And then you're going to give, you know, your sovereignty will reign. And so I can trust in that. But, but yeah, I could, I could just always lean on 413, Philippians 413 of saying, you know, the Lord actually is able and he's sovereign. Um, and part of it is, you know, not faith. How is my faith helping this? But truly, if this is all about faith, then this is actually towards my faith, not the other way around of, you know, my faith helping this situation. But, you know, this situation being part of my faith journey. And so, yeah, it's probably a pers perspective shift. You, you mentioned, I want, to, I want to take you back to the summer of 19. You were writing on Instagram uh, a post before, I think it was written before one of the Titans playoff games. You actually were talking about, um, your favorite lookout spot in Bend, Oregon, crying out to God to open a door, and he answered you. Um, I don't think a lot of people who don't play professional sports understand, you know, the uncertainty that really is truly being a professional football player for so many, for the majority, actually, not the ones that we 
you know, the ones that, um, you know, the Tom Brady's of the world, your old teammate, for example. So you're in this moment and you're crying out to God and you say he answered you. What are you, what are you saying to God there in that moment? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. So I, I've always, in big moments, I've always asked God and come to God, say, just open a door and I will go. And it doesn't matter where it is. And it's when I've come to those places of Lord, open a door. I don't care what it is. I just want to know it's you that he's opened doors. I'm talking every single time. And when I've just waited on him, uh, and that specific time, I remember like it was yesterday, it was a little over a year ago and it's up this street actually towards this mountain up here. And, um, I was just sitting there crying out to God. Literally. I was just yelling, Abba and off this like Valley and it echoes and it's beautiful. But, I was yelling that before I went to the Giants for community camp, didn't get signed, came back, but I was actually encouraged because I'm like, man, I feel good after that back surgery I can play. And and I came back and just screamed with joy, like Abba, and just screaming like, Lord, open the door. And I don't care what it is, but I feel good. I feel strong. And within like a day, I think I was going to pack up to go camping, feeling a little bit discouraged. And my agent calls me up, says, can you be on a plane to to Nashville in a couple hours? And I said, heck yeah, I can. And, <laughs> and I had been, uh, I had been visiting Nashville a few times when I was on the Patriots because I just love it during IR when I was on IR and because I just love Nashville, the music scene, the community. And, it's a great song. Um, oh yeah. And, uh, and yeah, when I was, when I was yelling out Abba and stuff, like he just, he just answered me and like, I forgot what I was saying. But, oh yeah. When I was, uh, I was visiting Nashville that whole time and just, the dream come true of my agent calling me and saying, uh, like Nashville or the Titans just called, like, would you want to get on a plane? I, I, I remember being on that plane, like in tears, hmm. um, just thinking this is just for rookie minicamp, like not high odds. And but I remember being in tears, like, Lord, I don't think you would put this in front of me without bringing me here. And my brother said the same thing. Like, I think you're going to get signed here. And so I just worked my butt off, gave it my absolute best. Like we just talked about, and the Lord opened a door out of 50 something guys, uh, opened a door for me to be there. And that's what I'm talking about, man. It's, it's absurd how the Lord opens doors. And I love living life on the edge to where you need him to open the door. And he loves that when you're on the edge of a cliff and you're saying, daddy, I need you to open the door and the faith it takes because so many of us get up to that uncomfortable door and we take a step back because it's uncomfortable and there's high pressure and there's pain and, but man, following Jesus takes some pain threshold. And if you're willing to have pain threshold, you see the, the fruit on the other side of those, those huge doors. So so good. So good. Jake, uh, Cole, I almost said Jacob Hollister. How many people have done that Amen. to you? <laughs> <laughs> A million people, I imagine. Cody Hollister is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. All right, Cody, I want to ask you, because on your Instagram page, you posted a video of you playing a new song that you wrote. May the Lord is what it's called. Um, yeah. Before we talk about the song, and I, I would love to have you play it for us all li to listen to. But before we talk about it, tell me about where music became a passion for you. You talked about during the coronavirus outbreak, you know, learning to play the piano and, and, and kind of, you know, writing this song and other things taking place in the music world. Where does music fit into the, all of this? Is that something you've always just had a passion for? I've always loved, I've had this, like, say I have music in my bones because I just love music. And, uh, but never taking it seriously. I was always just a sports guy, but my dad always played guitar and sang to us growing up just during naps and stuff. And, uh, but it wasn't until Arkansas when I, when I was in some deep depression and anxiety where my dad was like, you should pick up the guitar. And so I did. And I started playing and it was such an outlet for me. Like even just, I didn't know what I was doing, but just strumming some some chords and the vibrations of the music, hmm. uh, you could say saved me, man. It was like so healthy for me and so spiritual for me. And so it was kind of a saving grace during that tough time of just learning the guitar. I uh, picked it up, started singing more, kind of sang my whole life a little bit, but just wanted to be seen as the sports guy. So never really sang. <laughs> and, uh, but now I've kind of taken it more seriously, especially being in Nashville. There's a ton of talented people. So, well, I mean, maybe you'll be leaving worship someday at church. Who knows, right? Maybe that's the right. future calling for you. You never know. Um, would you be willing to play May the Lord and kind of give us a little background before you play it on why you wrote it, kind of what the song 
stems from and yeah. like the origins from it? <clears throat> yeah. So, um, my dad always said this, the numbers blessing over us, which is mostly the course in this, uh, like half of it, but, um, just looking at this time of what's going on with the coronavirus and, um, I pretty much was just analyzing what's going on watching people from observation, from friends getting laid off and, um, people struggling and in pain and in panic and empty streets and just this really, this really eerie vibe. Uh, and so I really wrote it just the Lord, like totally made it easy, uh, and just came out of me, but it was just, uh, pretty much to give comfort to those going through this right now. And so that's why I wrote it. It's called so Man of the Lord. This is, cl- this is the first time on sports <laughs> spectrum that somebody's actually played a song for us. So Cody Hollister, do your thing, brother. <laughs> All right, let's see how good this mic is. <laughs> Burning hearts and weary souls. What to do? No one really knows. Empty streets and no worries for. May the Lord give you peace and insanity. Show you rest in this restless dream. Use for good all these evil things. May the Lord bless you and keep you. shine upon you to the homeless to the hopeless to the broken to the lonely to the lowly in the spirit to the doctors and the nurses to pastors quoting verses number 624 may the lord to the mama trying to make it on her own to the unemployed, woke up doors were closed. To a sister and a brother, to a father and a mother. One minute they were with us, now they're gone. May the Lord and bless you and keep you. May the Lord. Shine upon you, and give you peace, and give you peace. So slow down, take a second child to look round Soak this moment in the stories that you missed out on Be present to the beautiful Plant a seed and watch the fruit it grows Come now to the one who seeks the sheep out Prodigal return on heaven, on and on now Oh, sufficient is the day it's on Give tomorrow to our gods and hold Give tomorrow to our gods who hold. May the Lord. Mm. It is. Good stuff. The audience of one right here clapping for you, buddy. That's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, How hard is it? Yeah, audience of one, right? That's funny. Uh, How 
how hard is it to write a song? It's got to be very, very difficult. Is this the first song you've ever written? No, I've written written a few songs. Have you? Just, uh, I mean, I guess it depends on the person. Uh, I mean, you can write a song in a minute if you want it, but True. it's going to be bad probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you write but, the words and then play it, or do you play it and then write the words? What's the what's the format? Uh, both. So sometimes I come up with a melody and then okay. come up with the lyrics, but... Uh, but where you write up lyrics, like I'll write a poem and then I want to turn into a song. But mm. um, I like having a melody because then I can fit a lot of lyrics into that that little melody. So, yeah. but all different kinds, man. People in Nashville can do a lot better job explaining it because they're so talented, man. I can come with their, I can come in there with like a simple little chord or something, or and then they suddenly can make a whole melody out of it and just create this beautiful production. So that's cool. Um, I'm a I'm an amateur, but there's some pros out there who just turn little things into these beautiful things. I mean, that sounded pretty professional to me, my friend. I'm just giving you all the props because that was awesome. That was really good. I have no idea how this is going to sound through a podcast, and hopefully, it sounds good. If it doesn't, uh, I'm going to give a heads up to those listening. We will post what Cody shared on Instagram too, which is a little, maybe a little better quality. We'll have to see, but either way you get the gist and it was awesome. And I'm so grateful. Cody, thanks brother. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks so much for being here on the show. Uh, I'm in, I'm encouraged by you. I really am. I appreciate you. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah. I love what you do and you're so encouraging to everyone. So Thank you, bud. appreciate you. God bless you and keep doing what you're doing. And many thanks to Cody Hollister for joining us here on sports spectrum, man. I just love his heart for the Lord. I really do. And his, his, um, just his willingness, I guess, to go where he went and his desire to really to desire Jesus. I love that he called it following the way. I love that he went out into a quiet area and just cried out, Abba, Abba, as in God, our Father. Man, that's powerful stuff. I got chills just listening to him tell that story. And then his musical talents, right? I hope it came across okay. We were taping this just to give you a little behind the scenes on zoom and he didn't have like a professional microphone in front of him so he was just doing this through the microphone on his phone but i thought it came out pretty good and that dude can play he can sing and he's a heck of a songwriter you can actually watch a lot of his stuff on instagram if you check him out he's over at cody hollister you can see him there on instagram and he posts a couple of other things that he's working on, including the song may the lord i hope he releases it on spotify like i'll add that to the to the playlist if he releases it. I mean, that was really good stuff. So many thanks to Cody Hollister for joining us here on Sports Spectrum. We wish him nothing but the best for a great 2020 season. If there is a 2020 season, and we certainly hope so, we believe the NFL will play. We hope it will play. We have so many players in the NFL that love Jesus and that want to use that platform to glorify him. So we'll see what happens. But we do appreciate Cody for being here on the show. We also appreciate our sponsors and partners, IJM and Compassion. For IJM, the International Justice Mission, setting slaves free. This is what they're all about, protecting 150 million people from violence worldwide. Go to their website, IJM.org slash TF to learn more. IJM.org slash TF. And of course, Compassion International, we love them. We love what they stand for. We love what they're all about, releasing children from poverty. Check out their website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. And pray about sponsoring a child in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Sports Spectrum. You can hit us up on our social media pages, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Just search Sports Spectrum and you'll be good to go. We're also on YouTube and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then whatever app that you're listening to this podcast on, click that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode of the Sports Spectrum podcast. So many episodes out there. We're continuing to bring these stories to you because we believe in bringing Jesus back into the conversation. Thanks so much. We love you guys. We'll see you next time with a brand new episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and stay safe.